Skazam! It's time for a special project. Rocking Horse Dreams and me, Hello Gregor, are going to be playing Duel of Ages Set 1 World Spanner uh, via video and email and pictures. Um, the video portion will be available to all of you to enjoy as a session video. Um, I have randomly set up the platters. He, uh, we, we decided that that would be my job upstairs in my room. And I'm about to choose our characters. The reason why I'm doing the choosing rather than us both um, secretly choosing characters as you're supposed to do in the game is because we only that, that way we don't double up on characters. We've decided it's okay to double up on item cards so we're each gonna draw from our own item deck so there can be multiple um, Remington dot three five sevens or whatever um, in this game we're going to be playing up to two um, but only one of each character. And so, since the platter is already set up, the, the secret character draw should not matter. Um, so it's just going to be public knowledge from the get-go. Alright, so we are going to be playing the game with, um, I just learned to shovel, like, a month ago, because <laughs> I figured it was useful um, in gaming, so I'm not very adept at it. But we're going to be playing the game with six characters. Um, and I'm just gonna uh, so that it's nice and clean, and there's no no doubt that I'm fixing um, the the teams. Um, there has been some complaint that maybe I'm fixing the the real people sessions I'm doing. Um, you know, trying to draw the most interesting characters possible, or trying to make it so that there's the best alchemy. Anyway, in order so that you know I'm not fixing the teams. Um, I'm just going to tell you the order I'm drawing them. The first draw is going to be for his team, because that's only polite. And the next draw will be for my team. And then I'll just alternate from there um, until I've drawn 12 cards. So the first, third, fifth, seventh, ninth, and eleventh cards uh, will be Rocking Horse Dreams characters. And the second, fourth, sixth, eighth, tenth, and twelfth cards will be my character characters and we'll see so I, I haven't been counting how many times I've shuffled you're supposed to shuffle do the riffle um, six or seven times depending on which mathematicians you believe in order to get true randomness um, fun fact for those of you who are interested in fun facts and I can't tell you where I got the fact. I think it was probably a book of, on game theory I read. Um, be interesting to read some more game theory. Now that I'm playing games more, I think I read that before I really was so focused on playing games. It might take the fun out of it, though game theory. Or maybe it would deepen the fun. I don't know. It's, it seems like kind of a, a leaving of the Garden of Eden. It might um, to lose that innocence um, to pull back the mystery behind games and games me game mechanics. Does that, does that increase one's appreciation or does it decrease one's appreciation or does it merely change it? I'm sure I've done it six or seven times by now. I've been babbling long enough. Okay, so this is going to be Rocking Horse Dream's first character. Milena Arabato. Yeah, I really enjoy this character. Um, she, of the gun characters, she's one for some reason I can I can, she feels like she has a lot more flavor than the kind of um when I say gun characters, I mean the kind of characters that seem blander. They just seem like they're some, I don't know, some person with a gun. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense. Okay, I'm going to draw a character for my team. There we go. It's Arden Glein. He's the, yeah, he's the guy who's really good at doing challenges, if I remember. Yeah. He gets the plus one bonus in any labyrinth. Bully for me, I got an adventure. 
All right, here comes another one for Rocking Horse Dreams. Annie Oakley. I think he'll appreciate having her. I just, I, I don't know. I think he, he seems like, I don't, I don't, I've never met him in person, but he seems like the type of guy who would really like Annie Oakley. Um, I'm sure he can tell you about that. He's going to be filming as well and editing all of this together. Um, so I don't, I don't know if he's going to include these comments. I'm just sending him footage and he can use this or he cannot use it. I don't really care. I mean, I care. I appreciate his effort, but I, I, I trust his judgment and what should go into the video. Um, here's another one for me, Paraxian. Oh, so I was worried about this. Um, Rocking Horse Dreams and whoever else, I have a different Paraxian than he probably has um, because they they released a new Paraxian to rebalance it. Um, so we'll have to talk about which one we're going to use. I have the other cards somewhere, I think, if we need to switch out. Um, so this is not the one that came with Set 1 World Spanner. This would be the one that, that was the replacement card that came in the Master Addendum. So, there we go. Sir Gawain. Sir Gawain is very slow, but very mighty if he has some weapons. He's got lots of, he's got a lot of weird um, weapon bonuses. Not, well, they're not really weird. He's just got a lot of, like if he has this weapon, he gets a plus one. If he has this weapon, he gets a plus one for this thing, and blah, blah, blah. Um, he's good if there's a horse. Unfortunately, if he has a, a living mountain, unfortunately, there's not a lot of those in this set. Um, they added a lot more horses and things in the other sets. So that's too bad. All right, here comes another one. Um, Sergeant Grit. Okay, he's a he's an example of what I mean by a gun guy. He's just kind of a guy with a gun. I don't know. I'm not too interested in him. He kind of reminds me of Sergeant Slaughter. If any wrestling fans, maybe because they're both sergeants. Uh, that makes sense. I, don't know. I uh, maybe because I, I'm not that interested in him. He doesn't seem to play too well for me. He, I don't know if he's maybe a, I don't think he's really a bad character. He seems like he has a lot of yellow and green in his stats, but um, this doesn't seem to do too well whenever I have him. Um, he, he plays the role of kind of the villain who seems kind of scary, but then he ends up failing uh, a lot of times. All right, fourth draw for Rocking Horse Dreams. Another gun guy, Boris Andronov. Um, He's got a, he's he's got a little bit more of a character. Kind of seems like a stereotypical Russian villain to me, um, but yeah. So we've got three gun guys so far. Andy Oakley's kind of a gun guy, and when I play by myself, I um, a lot of the cowboys kind of blur together. I keep Annie Oakley though. She seems to have a, she seems to stand out a little more. So I take some of them out of the deck. Um, I do that with the guns too. So. Well, no, I don't. I've thought about doing that. I just actually haven't taken the time to do it. Um, okay, so now, another one for me. Geronimo! That reminds me, I want to watch Callendale's Geronimo video. Um, I haven't done that yet. Geronimo's cool. He's a master of ambush. Here comes another one for Rockin' Horse Dreams. And I don't know that this would be good video. <laughs> Just a special note. Uh, here's Spartacus. Okay, more interesting character. Not Definitely not a gun guy. He can use two melee weapons at a time. So he can be a beast with the right um, right equipment. Yeah, I'm going to be scared of him. Tricky thing is melee, you oftentimes want to... You're going to use more in the early game. Um, and so you don't have those cards in the early game. But if you can get Spartacus the cards quickly... You know, before I get a lot of guns, I'm going to be in trouble. Marcus Aras, the, the kind of per Mr. Perfect, um, he's really good at everything, which it makes people suspicious of him, and they won't trade with him. All right, and final draw for Rocking Horse Dreams. It's going to be his favorite. Whichever card I draw is going to be Rocking Horse Dreams' favorite guy on his team. That's my prediction. Here we go. Jump up, up, bum, 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 bum. Rocking Horse Dreams' favorite guy is Pat Garrett. All right. Um, yeah. 
he's he's in the New Mexico territory, which I I think Arizona might have been part of the New Mexico territory. So this is probably Rocking Horse Dreams' grandpa, um, great grandpa, great great grandpa, great 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 grandpa. Uh, he's probably his grandpa's relative. Um, and so he'll like that. Here comes my last character. Ooh, so I'm just noticing Rockin' Horse Dreams has no future people. I have three future people. All right. And, oh, yes! I was hoping I'd get him. Agent 911, he's, he's one of the funnest people to have in the, um, the basic... Duel of Ages set one world spanner. I'm picking up the the camera here. Here we have blah 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 blah. That's Rocking Horse Dreams team. His dream team, so to speak. Uh, he's got two modern, two two two. No future. And he's got. I think he has the better melee team for sure. He's got. Um, these two guys, which are both mighty, mighty fighters, um, and some some good gun guys too. He's, uh, yeah, I've got a good gun guy in Paraxian, and I think I might have a better adventuring team. Though Milena Arabato is a good adventurer. Um, I have a better adventuring team, though, I think. He's gonna wipe the floor with me when it comes to combat. Unless Agent 911 can take care of him. Okay, so now I'm gonna do just a, a shorter kind of version of how we can introduce the characters um, without all the jabber. Um, just in case time or pacing works better. So, I've, I've done, I've gone to the trouble of drawing our respective teams of cars, Rocking Horse Dreams and, and I. The reason why I did it and not him is kind of arbitrary because he said I should do it. Um, and we agreed that just one of us should do it because we um, live very far apart and thus do not want to bother sharing a deck. We could have done it where like I mailed half the deck to him and he drew randomly from there, but I just drew randomly from one deck so that we didn't double up on characters and have all that messiness. Um, this worked out alright because I already set up the platters randomly um, and that's really the only time that you have your character choice be secret. Um, and we just, we're, we're, I mean you gotta kinda go on trust with, with this method of play anyway because we're not gonna see each other roll dice and all that. Um, yeah, so looking at his team, he's got, I don't want to do too much analysis for him, but he's got, um, he has no future characters at all, so I'll probably own the future Labyrinth, I'm guessing, maybe not. He's definitely got a, a much better fighting team, he's got, he's too strong ancient melee guys and lots of good gun guys. Um, Elena Arabato, I would say, is probably his best uh, adventurer, um, but it might just be because I like her. I haven't really been analyzing stats or anything, but she just seems like I can just see her. She's got a good speed, I guess. That's part of it. But I could just see her riding and, like, ducking behind bushes to get to the adventure, the objective, um, because she's a freedom fighter. Um, you know, my team... You know, this is the highlight. This was my last draw. I was super excited when I got it. Um... You know, I've got, I think I have the better adventuring team overall. Um, he can outfight me, though, hands down. Melee and guns, he's, he's got, he's gonna, he's gonna be, it's gonna be trouble. I mean, I do have, I do have some melee and some guns, but just not as good number to number. You know, if we, if we were setting them up next to each other and it was just like ready, aim, fight, he would win, um, Except for I've got this wild card. That's that's maybe what's gonna. If I have any hope of success, it's Agent Nine One One.